Welcome to our Friday edition of Fireside Chat. I'm working from home today. It's a beautiful morning. I'm sitting out on my deck. Pretty soon it will get too hot to work from here, but I want to spend this time with you. Uh, this is morning for me. I don't know when you'll happen to see this, but I want to just continue on in this time. We're talking about how God uses our relationships with one another for two purposes. One is an opportunity to find out where we really are spiritually, and secondly, as the opportunity to grow. Now, as Christians, as charismatic Christians, as Word of Faith Christians, which is what our church is labeled as, I guess, and what our focus really is, we tend to focus on the spiritual things, on the wonderful experience of worship, especially when we're able to come together and worship together as we love so much. And in our uh, maybe gifts of the Spirit, maybe praying in the Spirit, all these things are very important. The Bible does talk about those. But, but there's a whole area of, of what God's put us here to do, a whole purpose and responsibility for what God's put, put us here to do that, that so often we don't really look at very closely. And as a result, what we tend to do is think that because I pray in the Spirit, because I read my Bible, because I love worship and I've got my hands in the air and tears coming down my cheeks and I just love God, that that means I'm, really, I'm spiritually mature. And as we've seen, that's not the case necessarily, because we saw Paul, the Apostle Paul, writing a letter to the church at Corinth who thought they were so spiritual because the same things were happening with them. And Paul corrected them by saying, no, the measure of your spirituality is in the love that you have for one another and then the love that you have for the world. The reason we are here, the church is here, is not to display the gifts of the Spirit. In fact, when you really understand what they are, you understand that they're just a tool that God uses to demonstrate His love for people. And so we miss it when we get our focus on the spiritual aspects of our lives. They're real, they're important, <clears throat> but the ultimate reason why we're here is we are to represent Christ. We are the body of Christ in the world, and the, the essence of who Christ is, the essence of what He does, is his kind of love, the love with which he's loved us, which is a sacrificial love, a love that prefers someone else before myself. So the measure of our spirituality, and the wonderful thing about this, is that, the, is that you don't have to go far looking for a test of finding out where you are. Sometimes for me, it's just driving to church and I'm running late and that somebody's decided in front of me to go 20 miles an hour when there's a 35 mile an hour speed limit and I want to get angry at them and frustrated with them and all of a sudden I realize that all I'm concerned about is me. They're in my way, they're on my street and they're keeping me from getting to go where I want to go and I need to go. And I've had to learn that when I get that reaction to repent because I'm no longer walking in the love of God towards that person. I have no idea why they're going slow, but it's not about me, and I begin to pray for them. But, but even more so, we run into these situations in our family, we run into these situations, maybe somebody that you're working with in the grocery store. Every day we run into relationships, unless you're hiding yourself away in a convent or a monastery somewhere, you, you, we've, we run across situations where we are encountering relationships with people and our reaction to them and our response to them tells us where we really are spiritually. And as we begin to renew our minds to why we're here, as we begin to renew our minds to what Jesus has really done for us and the love that he's shown for us, we begin to see where we are and now we have the opportunity and that opportunity shows up in my life when I'm confronted with a situation that makes me uncomfortable. Maybe somebody has a need and I don't want to meet that need. I don't want to be bothered. I don't want to slow down. I don't want to take the time. That's my running up against a boundary in my life, a selfish boundary where I'm saying, no, I don't want to go any further than this when Jesus in me wants to go through that boundary and reach out and touch somebody. And of course, the, the parable of the Good Samaritan is exactly about that. The Levite, the priest, the, the religious people drew boundaries and say that that man across the street is not my responsibility. I have a responsibility. I'm getting to church. I'm going to serve God. I'm going to do what God wants me for me to do today. But it was the Samaritan, the man that was not a Jew, the man that was hated by the Jews. This man crossed the road and whatever that injured man needed, he was willing to do for him. He did not set a boundary on how far he was willing to go for that man. Now, I don't know about you, but that confronts the limits in my life where I feel comfortable. Because the question I get, am I responsible for everybody? Am I responsible? I don't have enough to give. But it's those thoughts 
to build barriers that keep Jesus from working through me and the Holy Spirit working through me. So all I'm saying today is I have to be willing to look at those limitations in my life where I said, no, I don't want to do that, or I'm not willing to do that, or that makes me uncomfortable, or I don't have enough. Notice what's common in all those statements I just made. I, I don't have enough. I'm not willing. I don't want to. It's all about me. And Jesus lives in me just as he lives in you if you're a Christian. And Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, wants to shine his love forth. And as we allow him to do that, then we will begin to experience his love in our own life at another level. And I'm preaching to me this morning, and you're getting to listen into this. I needed to hear this too. So here's the lesson from the day. First of all, as we've been saying, when I say I don't want to, when I say I'm uncomfortable, when I say I don't have enough, when I start questioning it, that's what the, that's what the, 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 the lawyer did with Jesus. When I start questioning it, then I'm putting up barriers and saying I'm not willing. And so what I'm realizing now and what I want you to realize is when I find myself doing that, I need to stop and realize the decision that I have to make. Am I going to let that boundary, am I going to let me be in dominion or I'm going to let Jesus love through me? And the Holy Spirit's living in us to enable us to do that. So just a challenge for all of us today, for me especially, for you. So in the relationships that you encounter today, just be sensitive and notice how you're reacting and how you're responding. And where you find yourself putting up limits, then begin to ask the Lord to help you to break through those limits. Well, I trust that this blesses you. It sure has helped me today. Have a wonderful rest of this day and weekend. Make sure you tune in Sunday at 9.30. I have a, there's a real special blessing you're going to get. So don't forget to tune in live stream Sunday or come and join us with your face mask and all the other things that we've instructed you to do. God bless you. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. God bless you and we'll see you again next week.